All right, sweet. So I'm here with James Bartle, the founding CEO of Outland Denim. Thanks for seeing us, James. Oh, it's a pleasure, man. Is founding CEO your title, or what are we, what are we is, calling you these days? Yeah, that yeah? is the title at and the moment. Yeah, until they kick me out as the CEO, I'm, that's what I get. Yeah, yeah nice. Um, James has been kind enough to talk to us about Outland Denim. So, mate, can we start just by you? Give us an overview. What's it about? How did it start? What's yeah, the story? Yeah, well, it's been a, a long journey, um, but you know, ultimately, it, it all began at the movies. And um, I went to the movies with some friends and my wife, and we watched the Liam Neeson film Taken. And, oh, yeah. and for, for those of you that that haven't seen it, it's a uh, you'd have to know who Liam Neeson is, but he's an action hero, and his daughter and um, friend were abducted and sold into the sex industry. And at the end of the movie, some some text came up and said that these things still happen around the world and. It just showed how naive I was, but to me it was just, I just couldn't believe it. And, yeah. you know, I thought, well, I need to start some sort of vigilante and go and eradicate these kinds of people from the planet. <laughs> you know, I was so angry. And my wife was very quick to remind me that I didn't have the combat skills Liam Neeson had. And <laughs> I'd need to find a different way of addressing this issue. Um, a couple of years passed and it was still always there, the idea and the, that, you know, the you'd love to do something about this problem. Um, my wife's a journalist and a really keen researcher. And so she continued to filter information through and I learned a little more about the problem over those years until I was at a um, uh, an event um, and I came across a rescue agency and this agency specialized in the identification and rescue of young girls that are being sold into um, the sex industry in yeah. Southeast Asia. And they asked if I wanted to come on a trip and see what it was like firsthand. And so a, col a colleague of mine and myself, we went over and um, it was on that trip that, you know, everything changed for me. I'll never forget. We landed in Thailand and we're, we're taken a few hours out to a place called um, Walking Street in Pattaya. And they told me this was the sex capital of the world. And I remember just... You know, the, the hustle and the bustle, it was just such a busy place and there was Westerners everywhere, a lot of local people and um, and the brothel was lined either side of the street. So these KTV bars. And um, I, I looked at it and I saw the faces on the people and I thought, but it feels heavy, it feels a bit gross, but they look happy. Like, I yeah. don't get it, you know. And we continued to walk through the place and um, we walked out the other end of the street where it was a lot quieter, it was a lot darker. And we came across this line of girls standing at the front of this building. And one of those girls um, was very obviously young. And, you know, I'll never forget um, the look in her face, you know, just seeing just how fearful she was. And, yeah. you know, she was so intimidated to be where she was. And I asked the representative that had taken us there, you know, um, look at this girl, like, how old is she? And he goes, she looks like she's 12 or 13. And... I'm like, well, we have to do something. And that's the moment where you yeah. think, okay, this is my Liam Neeson moment. I'm yeah. going to run in there and I'm going to kick those doors down and yeah. shoot everybody up and mm -hmm. run away with this girl. Yeah. And he said, James, if you look around, you'll see that these, these girls are everywhere. You know, and it was, it was a moment where it changed my life. I yeah. went, wow. Like, I mean, I've told this story thousands of times and every time I feel the emotional. Yeah. So picture that little girl's face. And I think if that was my little girl, at the time I had two nieces and... You know, I, I pictured one of them being in this situation. Yeah. There's nothing I would have stopped at to yeah. to make sure they didn't have to be abused like this. Um, yeah. You know, so from that moment on, I knew I wanted to be a part of the solution. It was a done deal. I was convicted. I would, I, I, I didn't know what to do exactly, yeah. um, other than I had an interest in um, denim. Yeah. Um, I always wanted to be a cowboy, so <laughs> I, I figured this was the closest closest I could come to it, and so. We traveled on into Cambodia and as I hit Cambodia, I saw that poverty was a, um, a real thing. And as we learned more about this problem, we understood that this is really an economic problem that we we're facing where people are made vulnerable. When they're vulnerable, they're, they're then sold into things like um, yeah. the sex industry or they're sold for labor trafficked. Um, yeah. You know, uh, slavery today's uh, 40 odd million people um, as a conservative estimate, you know, caught up in modern day slavery. Yeah. You know? So this is a problem that's affecting, I think that the number actually is one in every 130 women on the face of this planet is a slave. Yeah, man. So, you know, as you start to realize that, okay, there's so many slaves um, and and it comes down to more often than not the fact that they were poor. Yeah. It's an economic problem. Yeah, okay. So we need to do something about that. Um, I'd worked for a long time in, um, uh, in the... Uh, 
NGO space yeah. and um, charity or you know, not-for-profit yeah. space. And I, I didn't believe that was the answer, though I did start it as a not-for-profit. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, we set this up to be able to employ these kinds of people and give them opportunity and take them on a path to create and success themselves. Yeah. Um, that was 10 years ago. Yeah, and that's awesome story, Jim. Like, it's so heart-moving. I think as well what I like is that you saw the problem and then got moved in the moment but then didn't just forget about it. You yeah. know, like it's easy to see something, go home, back to Western world, into our creature comforts and forget. You said it's an economic problem, so it needs an economic solution. So how do we help? How are you helping um, the sewing team economically? How does that all work? Yeah. Well, we over a period of six years, which we call our development years, where we would... Uh, um, uh, you know, try and develop this business model and the products that we were producing to be yeah. viable, to be a genuine economic solution. Um, we developed uh, four pillars for the business, which turned out to be really key in being able to create this kind of success um, in a business model that gives the power back to the people to be successful or not themselves. Yeah. Um, so the first thing is we give opportunity to people that may not get it otherwise. And that's really key. It's really important. It's one thing to go and hire someone that's skilled. Yeah. It's another to be able to go and hire someone that's not skilled and then take them on the journey to becoming skilled, um, therefore giving them independence rather yeah. than having a dependence on a charity, yeah. on aid, welfare, whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, we want to put the power back in their own hands to make good and bad decisions. Yeah. So opportunity. The next thing is training. Um, we train them in every aspect of making the garments. So the garment sector in Cambodia is a really, um, it's, it's, a, it's a huge amount of the uh, GDP in Cambodia, so yeah. it's, a, it's an important industry. It's a good industry to train somebody into. So as we train them into this industry as an expert, they get that independence. Yeah. Um, living wages versus minimum wages. Living wages is what you and I get. I yeah. mean, you might get a bit less than living wages, <laughs> but you know, um, it just means that we can live a lifestyle where we um, are able to pay our rent. We're yeah. able to save, we're able to have healthcare, education, the basics, maybe go out for dinner on Friday night, you know, yeah. those things, that's a living wage. And that's where they start. And from there, they, they climb the ladder. Like yeah. they, they have a ten, good attendance. If they have a good attitude, if they improve yeah. their skills, they go up and get paid more. Yeah, good. And so uh, the last thing that we discovered that they needed was education. And so it's not uh, an education probably like, like we've been privileged to just get because yeah. of being born into Australia. Yeah. Um, this education came down, comes down to what are the gaps that they have in their basic understanding of a range of things. So it could be finance. So yeah. they're now earning more money than they may have earned before. So how are we going to um, teach them to make good decisions? Yeah. What's good debt? What's bad debt? You know, how do you budget for a household and plan for the future? Mm. So that's part of the educational component. Um, it could be around women's health. Um, things like breastfeeding, yeah. um, the benefits of breastfeeding versus baby formula, yeah. the um, you know self defense um, languages, those kinds of things, and so this is built into their their work week where they're they're getting these opportunities. They're paid to come to work, but when I'm at work, this is part of what I need to do. Yeah, and so it's been a it's been a pretty um, pretty incredible impact, and the stories that I can tell you of the impact just blows your mind. And it's not because of Outland Denim. It's yeah. all because of these people choosing that they want a better future for themselves, a much more secure future for their families. And the results are really clear. That is excellent. And also it's just, it's sustainable beyond Outland Denim. If one of the garment workers can still take her skills further if they move abroad or Absolutely, anything. Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, we've even had that happen. It's, yeah. been, it's been amazing to see how um, you know, they can, uh, well, one, one in particular I think of now, she got married, she moved to another province. Yeah. Um, she was able to get a job in a garment factory as a section leader. And in fact, she earned more there than she was earning with us because she had such high skills. Yeah. And to us, that's success. Yeah, that know? is. That's incredible. So you've got these low skilled people, which will always suffer earning next to nothing. Yeah. And our job is to give those people living wages. Yeah. So the living wage, Jim, the difference is that that supplies them the opportunity to be able to not just exist, but to move forward with their, you know, with their lives. It puts power back in their own hands. And, yeah. you know, I think when we think about charity and, and the way we've kind of operated things in the West a little bit, and although our intentions probably has never been this, yeah. we've kind of somewhat enslaved people to a degree yeah. again. Yeah. They've been obligated to us or they've been dependent upon us and our yeah. donations and our whatever. 
And really, when you think about it, you know, we've all probably been in that position to somebody, feeling obligated to them, and yeah. and it's not it's not actually freedom, you know. Yeah. And I think about it, you think about your your even your own Christian experience, yeah. you know, of what what the Christian faith is built on. It's built on freedom. It's not built on obligation and guilt. Yeah. Although we may sometimes feel like that, <laughs> yeah. it's not built on that. It's built on freedom. And so I think that you know we need to think about our business and and creating these kinds of impacts in that way. How do we create an environment where they feel like they are free? Yeah. They're not obligated. They're not indebted to us. Um, you know, how do they? How do they then take what they've been given and multiply that? You know, yeah. and and we've got incredible stories of of young ladies doing exactly that. You know, seeing a need on the street from a stranger and going and meeting that need with their own money that yeah. they've been earning doing this. To me, that's a win. That's success. Yeah. Um, I think that speaks to everything that we're trying to create is when you can equip people to get out of this hand-to-mouth cycle. Yeah. Because when you're in that cycle, you can't think about anything other than no, that. No, that's right. And then move into this phase of being able to think outwardly um, and everything changes in communities when you get to that place. Yeah, that is excellent. And, and like generationally too, like these ladies, their lives change, getting living wage. And then their children's lives, you know, they got more op- options for education, more options for... Absolutely. Know, yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely what I would see the future as when it comes to business. And, you know, I'd say if you're thinking about business, you've really got to come back and ask yourself the question, is my business adding anything to my community or to this world? Yeah. Um, or is it taking away from it? Yeah. I think we've, we've fallen into this... Um, this era of business which i hope is now becoming the past of where we've taken resources from here Mm. and we've placed those resources over here and we've called that profit yeah because we've measured the economic success in the profiting country yeah as profit yeah but now we've got to go back and really look at this and go we've got to measure the triple bottom line which is the social the environmental and the economic success of any business and when we start doing that then my gosh you might get a rude awakening as to yeah. are some of these household name brands actually profitable. Yeah, that's right. That's right. If it's not on the back of slaves, you know, can they exist? Yeah. I, I like that you're exposing and shining a light on some of these things, um, James, because it is a big, it's a, like, you know, you. I think you said uh, one in six people are involved in the fashion industry. Fashion industry yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean that's, that's a big number. That's hey? a big number. That's a big number. And so you've got Outland Denim going, but... You know, if we could speak a little bit about a couple of new ideas you got on the run, um, you know, some different making opportunities. What, what's happening yeah. coming up with Outland? Well, man, you know, you think about the brand and you think, okay, well, like even with your biggest dreams, how big can you grow? And it's really exciting because you could grow to employ lots of people and, and see this impact further. Yeah. But, you know, I want to dream bigger than that. You know, I really believe that if we utilize the fashion industry, like you just said, one in six people in the fashion industry, um, are employed by the fashion industry in some way, um, then what could happen by utilising the power of other brands? Yeah. Um, what if we were producing for them? And what if we were creating a standard that we stamped every product that was produced like this? What would consumers do? How would their habits change? Yeah. You know, and this is, this is, I guess, what we've been working on for a number of years now. And so that's why we've launched Maker, and make a standard okay. and maker is it's spelled m-a-e-k-a um M-A-E-K-A. Can people yeah. look it up is yeah it live yeah look already? it up it is yeah. live we've done a very soft launch it's not something that we're pushing hard because the reality is we don't have capacity to produce for any more brands where we're producing our own we're producing for karen walker yeah um and um you know we we want to grow this in a sustainable way where we we don't grow too quickly and fall over we get so much inquiry yeah. um, from from brands you know, like wanting us to produce. They want this story associated with their brand, which is which is great. But um, we we also need to make sure we align with brands that aren't going to use our story as a greenwashing tool. Yeah, um, a tool that's just marketing manipulation. Yeah, we okay. want to align with brands that genuinely care. Yeah, that genuinely want to make a difference in the world, and that's why we've aligned with Karen Walker. Um, as the first brand to to produce for. That's excellent. And so you do still have creative... Well, at least you know, like, it's not just people saying, you know, we're ethically trading, we're not enslaving people. You actually have con- 
control. You have involvement to, to know that that's true. That's right. And and I think it's it's one thing to say it too. And we, we spoke about, um, you know, audits earlier and the, yeah. and the, the corruption that can exist. I'm not saying all audits are bad. It might be the best thing we've got right now. Yeah. But um, what if we could um, think a little differently to what we have been thinking? Like, uh, for example, in our facility in Phnom Penh, we have a... Um, uh, a third party audit, which is a 24 seven audit, meaning that there is always a company watching us, which is not us. Meaning yeah. that if I go and employ slaves or kids or do something wrong, yeah. it will be exposed. Yeah. And that's done through a range of sensors and cameras and a range of things that take that um, ability away from me to yeah. be able to exploit anyone. And I think that that level of transparency is what our industry needs. Yeah. Um, is it right that it needs that? Is it, no, it sucks that it needs that. Yeah. But but our industry has proven it can't be trusted. You know? Well, that's right. I mean, it's proven there's some shops with 5,000 young ladies in there just completely exploited. Yeah, absolutely like, exploited. Yeah, yeah, there's no question. And then we see, you know, just even workplace health and safety issues that, yeah. you know, people locked in buildings that can't get out. There's not enough ventilation. Yeah. I mean, we've employed many people that have come from the garment sector. We have a 17-year-old girl that came to us and um, you know she was she was taken out of Cambodia and sold it into Malaysia as a slave. You know, yeah. with her friend. Her friend died there. You know, it's cheaper today to replace a slave than to maintain one. Uh, so so life is cheap. Yeah. Um, and you know, this this young lady's been able to come into a workplace and work where she's you know experiencing something totally different mm. to what she experienced from the time she was fourteen, where she's yeah. seen death. She's been a uh, held uh, bondage you know yeah yeah and now she's getting holistic kind of you know equipping you know financial equipping and life skills and English to be able to dream and... beyond outland denim yeah you know and, and and man when you think about it, they come in they've come from here yeah they get they get invested into to be able to think oh my gosh i've got all this talent i've got all this work yeah like i maybe don't want to be a seamstress yeah yeah Awesome. Yeah. What do you want to be? You know, yeah. and have you got some skills to go and do it? And and so they they go on and do their own thing. And that's the win because they become independent people. Yeah. That think independently. That don't have this dependence on you or I, yeah. the rich white people in a, in Australia that yeah. are going to keep making donations. Yeah. Now that's fantastic, Jim. I, I love hearing about all this. Um, I'm going to say a name, and I hope you're not sick of hearing this name. I'm sure I will be. Megan Markle. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you knew it was coming. Yeah. I'll only go there for a second. How do you get your hands in the hands <laughs> of, I mean, your genes in the hands yeah. of 2019's most famous human? How did you do that? Um, well, mate, honestly, like everything that's happened in this business, I just say it's an act of God, <laughs> yeah. honestly. Um, you know, it was, it was very organic in the way that that all came about. Um, you know, I'll never forget the experience of it. Um, I had landed in Cambodia the night before with our brand manager, Matt, and, um, you know, I woke up, my phone was off the hook oh, crazy. Every, um, every person texting to you. Yeah, yeah. like, okay. is, is, is me and Michael wearing your jeans? And um, media, and like, it was crazy. And, yeah. you know, it was, it was something that really changed our business. It was, yeah. um, we were already growing really quickly. We just launched into Canada with the top two department stores there, and we just signed with David Jones here in Australia. Yeah. And so we were already actually struggling yeah. to keep up. She then hops off wearing our jeans, which just blows up our exposure, which was amazing. Um, so many benefits came from that, but then also a lot of challenges came from yeah, that. Yeah, the but, scaling. Um, and... Yeah, the scaling. In fact, we nearly fell over as a result of it. Yeah. You know? okay. um, because there was so much growth so quickly. I was so eager and entrepreneurial. Yeah, yeah. I saw these things as opportunities that will only happen once, and you've got to take them. And you know, they were that was just bad decisions on my part. And but look. It, it, she's an amazing human. She gets a lot of uh, a lot of flack, I know, but um, I couldn't speak more highly of what I do know. Um, yeah. The decision she has made um, for somebody who is a fashion icon um, yeah. to to align with our brand because she cares about more than just fashion yeah. um, was really cool. She she's worn our jeans a number of times. Yes, yeah. you know. Um, continued to wear them and so it's pretty cool. I've well, never met her. Jeans. I've never no, met no, 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 no. But I did meet somebody whilst I was in London who said that they were meeting her that night. Oh, there you go. And I asked if I could come and she said, no, you can't. So, you know, <laughs> that's as close as I got. Yeah. yeah. But she's wearing your jeans because they're great jeans. So yes. keep wearing them. They are fantastic. Of course. Yeah. Now, I, it's interesting, like, you know, I do appreciate the 
just the crazy, not the craziness, but the excitement that can come with actually doing something that changes people's lives. I yeah. think, you know, like, it's hard work, right? Yes. Like, I know it's not just a walk in the park. Like, have you had sleep for the last five years? <laughs> Maybe just since COVID started. Yeah, just since COVID, yeah. It's been, it has been a real challenge. Um, yeah. You know, I, I often say to people, like, I don't think I have the ability to do this. In fact, I know I don't have the ability to do this. Yeah. Um, you know, it's... Uh, I say there's been so many acts of God in this process, yeah. like for us to get to where we are. Yeah. Um, but, I, but I have, outside of that, another superpower. And that superpower is that I picture that girl I told you about. Yeah. You know, and when I think about quitting, yeah. I think about her. Yeah. And I go, you know what? Like, man, how weak would that be of me to, yeah. to quit? You know, and, and why shouldn't yeah. I sacrifice yeah, why shouldn't we for fight? them? Mm. Um, because you know nothing worth having is going to be easy. Yeah. You know it is going to be difficult and hard. And I just look at the blessing that has been bestowed upon my family and I, in in the stuff you don't expect to come out of, you know what I would have been taught growing up as hardship. Of, yeah. You know ch these challenges that we've faced to be able to be on this journey. Yeah. Um, but I'm so glad that we haven't quit yet, and and I refuse to I refuse to be beaten uh, down and quit yeah. unless unless God himself grabs him by yeah. the collar and, and tells me that yeah. that's enough. I, I think that's amazing, James, because a lot of the time, like, you know, we just grabbed a $5 latte, walk across the road in our hundreds of dollars outfits. Yeah. You know, it's easy to get desensitized from the very reality that that 13-year-old girl was there mm. at that night. Yeah. And, and, and it happens... Daily, now, and, and today. There's many more of them still there yeah. right today, yeah, like you say. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, like I get frustrated at the price of petrol and, the, you know, like it's just so peripheral when you look on a world scale. It is, but but it's also real to us. So, yeah, like, okay. I think what we need to think about is it's not about beating ourselves up about going, okay, well, oh, we're so privileged where, where you know, I, I need to feel guilty about... Yeah, it's not. It's, I don't think that's the answer. Well, I suppose that doesn't help. It, does it, it doesn't. So no. I think what we need to do as entrepreneurs, as business owners, is we need to think about it differently, and we need to think about how do I create a product that you want, and then every time you buy that product, you are aligning with, uh, you are aligning your values with the brand's values, and yeah. when those two values align, then something really powerful can happen. Yeah. So um, when you buy a gene, you are directly responsible for these outcomes that we've been talking about. Yeah. That's what charity should be. That's what business should always have been. Yeah. Um, therefore, I'm now, um, rather than owning slaves, I'm freeing them. Yeah. Um, because I made the choice to align with a brand that has the same values as mine. Yeah. And rather than, if I really thought about it, do some of the brands that we support and endorse just by buying their products align with our values. Yeah. And I think we'd be pretty confident to say, There'd be very few people on the planet yeah. values would align with the brand's values that we're buying from. Yeah, that's right. Like when you're buying a five dollar t shirt or a twenty dollar pair of jeans, you've got to wonder who's paying the price. I can tell you. Yeah. <laughs> well you've seen it, right? Yeah. I can tell you. There's there's no question. But again, it's not about making you feel guilty for that no. because hey, we're all part of the problem. And we live in a society where the options haven't been created yet. Yeah. So yeah. if you're an entrepreneur, you have a huge opportunity right now. This is a time that's gonna mark history as when Things slid so far in the wrong direction. Yeah. But we we woke up and we went, we are going to create change. Yeah. This part of the market, not just in fashion, but in food and everything, is growing so rapidly that if you want to make a difference using your business, now is the time. Yeah, okay. You're gonna you're gonna revolutionize communities if you think about it in this way. What am I gonna to add to it? What problem yeah. am I gonna solve on a social or environmental? Ultimately on both levels. Um, yeah, go and do it. Now's yeah. the time. See, when I'm around you, James, I want to get involved. Like, you know, what you just said, like, this is the time for people. You know, if there's people watching this who are interested in this, they should go for it. Like, yeah. it is the time, right? Yeah. And I think when we go for it too, not not with this um, idea that it's going to be easy, I'm no. going to make it. I've been going for 10 years and I still suck at this. I'm still learning every yeah. day about how to do this. But um, I also have learned that the failures along the way is what has made me to get to here. Yeah. And so rather than looking at my failures now as like I, I want to punish myself or I'm so disappointed in myself or I let it beat me down or let it hold me back for weeks and months. Yeah. I don't. I see it as a step closer. Yeah. Oh, man, okay, yeah, that hurt. I'm a, I'm a bit closer. Yeah. 
I'm a bit close every time I fail. And yeah. so by starting and failing, um, starting a little business yeah. and failing that is not failure. It's a step closer to yeah, success. Um, and yeah. success doesn't look like necessarily lots of money or mm. um, things that we're kind of taught success mean. Success means, um, you know, did I meet the objective of my business? What was yeah. the objective? The objective is to give freedom to people around the world. Well, then we've experienced success. Yeah. Um, was it to become the richest man on the planet? Uh, no. So I don't need to measure that. Do no. I need to be, um, you know, financially viable? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, it's so, still a business. Yeah, yeah exactly. You can't, can't run negatively. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and these are all good topics, James, because like I think, you know, you're right in exposing like it's not good enough for companies to grow on the back of exploitation anymore. Like there's just, I don't know, even just socially, there's got to be a higher expectation than that. There is, and it's, um, it's that's why I say it's incredible right now that's happening. I mean, you know, you, you go and look at some of the statistics around the growth in the, we call it ethical or sustainable um, yeah. market, you know, it's... Um, <laughs> Mate, it is, it is unbelievable. I mean, ESG for corporations now is top of conversation. Yeah. Like, if we don't have good environmental and social governance around our business our, and our supply chains, yeah. um, then investment is going to dry up. Investors are becoming more savvy to this. They're yeah. looking at it because it poses a genuine risk to the economic side of the business as well. Yeah, so, does, yeah. so we've got to be very mindful of it. Um, and... But not just not just mindful of, of it from a from the perspective of there's now governance um, rec- not governance but there's now there's now an expectation from the public so I have to well you know I think you're going to be just another one of those brands companies that's yeah. just the greenwasher yeah yeah and people can but tell don't you think I do I think we've all got this BS radar oh, yeah, it's yeah. been getting more and more sensitive over the years yeah. that we can read it and have an indication of whether it's real or not yeah. Um, but if you genuinely care, if you genuinely believe in what it is that your brand, company, whatever is fighting for, yeah, you will have conviction. If you have conviction, you can then go and convert people to your brand. Yeah. If you don't have that, no one will follow. Yeah, I love it. I have a personal love for this because a couple of years ago, we, my family got blessed to come over and my daughter and son were there, but my daughter particularly just walked around in the sewing house and met the ladies and the host was brilliant. And she hasn't stopped talking about it because she saw it in action and the environment was pleasant. You know, like, yeah, that was sewing garments, but it had not a sweatshop appeal. Yeah, Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like it was cool and there was water available and there was vibrance in the air. And, yeah. You know, and it, it literally changed my daughter's life enough that she won't now buy anything. <laughs> like, it's just awesome. awareness, you know, yeah, and she's, she's young. And now yeah. for her life, everyone she talks about will be impacted. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It does have a flow on effect, this stuff, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. And, you know, you, don't, you do not realise, I mean, um, you know, since you've blown your daughter's horn, can I Let's do it. Let's, yeah, you know? Proud dads, we yeah. have to. We have to. You know, my, my seven-year-old um, who's spent some time in Cambodia um, has been impacted by it as well and you know last night she's been saving for a horse she saved just over two hundred dollars she and wants to be a cowgirl like i told you she's got to save yeah well, I, I have to don't i, <laughs> I told her she's got to save a thousand dollars and um you know she got this um uh i can't remember i think it's compassion flyer last night she loves sponsor kids and yeah uh, she, she just loves that idea and she's already put her own money into that but last night she she obviously got convicted and she yeah. just said I don't really need a horse. Um, so she went through and wrote this list of things that she can buy for, um, these were African kids, wow. um, last night. And I'm just like, wow, she gave she gave $115 of her $200 wow. away. Um, and, you know, I just thought, oh my gosh, like, yeah. I'm not going to, I'm going to let that cost you. Yeah. I'm going to let that yeah. mean that you've got to now earn another $100 to get yeah. back to there before you get anywhere near your goal. Yeah. And, and just yeah. the, the joy that it brought her, you know, like she's going to learn. Yeah. That, man, because the, the Bible talks about this. Yeah. That the gift of giving. Yeah. You know, the, the, there's so much that, we, you know, we've all experienced, but being able to meet a need, to be able to be a part of something greater yeah. um, than the receiving is just so much more gratifying yeah. and satisfying than than. Yeah than the receiving. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Oh, that's where it matters. I love that stuff, Jim. 
I love that, James. Well, well, have you got any final thoughts? Any any last things you'd like to chat about? I mean, there's a, you and I could chat. We could chat all day. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, look, I I get excited about the the next generation yeah. coming through, and you know, I know I've already said this that I think you've got a, a big opportunity. I think there's a mm. this is this is a time in history that's going to be marked by a. a we're going to, I don't like this word, but we're going to pivot out of what, what was what was really dark into something that is going to be really yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And um, because we recognize this and because, I mean, because it is, it is so needed. If you, if you read media, if you, if you, if you're looking anywhere outside of your own front doors, you're going to know that the, the environmental and the social issues of today yeah. are really bad. Yeah. Um, Per capita, I think there's actually less slaves today. Yeah. And I say that to encourage you is that if we've been able to reduce the ultimate number of slaves per person on the planet, then we could beat this. Yeah. And I would love if I am, you know, lucky enough to live until I'm 80 or 90, I would love to see that we could eradicate and and i don't think that that's silly to think that we yeah. can eradicate slavery and i don't think it's silly that we can eradicate poverty yeah. in fact i have heard statistics on um that if every church going christian in north america were to just give 10 percent of what they earn poverty wouldn't exist yeah so we should yeah, use our businesses consulted. To beat this, and we should do it quickly. Absolutely. Now, there's definitely enough resource on the planet for every single human. Yeah. It's just dispersed unequally, and yeah. some of us have way too much, and you know, and yeah. But man, like even that, I want to challenge you on that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's that interesting thinking, that that just came. It just flies off the tongue. Doesn't it does. It? it does for me still. Yeah. But, but what if the way we lived our lives that we were smart enough to go? We can create businesses. We can create products that just do these things. Yeah. So for me to be able to be part of the change, I just need to be wise about the the, the brands I support. Hey, you got to spend more to buy our jeans. If you're buying a hundred dollar jeans, you're going to need to spend two hundred dollars to buy it. So yeah, yeah, it's going to cost you more, but they're better. They're going to last longer. Yeah. And you're going to have way more street cred. By oh, wearing and I got so they're super comfy. I wear mine nearly every day. Yeah. Well, you know, you but no, but I mean, I'd rather that now. Now that my eyes have been open, I can't go to the sample sale and buy the twenty dollar jeans anymore. You just feel sick. Like yeah. it actually. You know, we, we are part of the solution. We are, and it's going to happen through our purchasing. Yeah. yeah, and I do want to give a, 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 a plug. Like, if you want jeans, get on Outland Denim and look at them. They're awesome. The range of lady stuff that's come on board as well, like the new denim dresses and all that, that's so good. Yeah, um, and like, we're so stoked. We've we've yeah. gone and got the best designers, and, um, you know, from the brands you'll know, we've gone and got it. I mean, we were approached by these de designers to, can we come and work with you? We love what's what Outland Denim exists for, and then now they've recreated our entire lines, and so the products you're seeing are done by the, some of the best designers in the world, yeah. you know, and um, we're going to be able to offer those products around the globe um, to people to be able to now have an, uh, a really tangible way of being a part of creating that long-lasting change. Yeah, excellent. James, thank you for your time, brother. Awesome, I really man. appreciate that. That was fantastic. Awesome, man. Cheers. Thanks.